This presentation is brought to you by the Boston Chapter of IONS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies, and by FREE, the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences. Thank you so much for coming today. I know it's summertime and people have lots of things going on. And uh, this is an extra special meeting that I've been trying to have happen for a number of years, and it's finally happened. So all the stars are aligned. I'll just put that in place. <laughs> so I'm Andrea Kerwitz. Welcome to Boston Island's August meeting. Today we have a very special guest, Ray Hernandez. He comes to us from the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Extraterrestrial Encounters. And, a, and extraordinary experiences. Oh, we've added that. So <laughs> he will be talking with us today about a research study that one of the first of its kind about UFO contact with experiencers and their uh, experience with non-human intelligence. And he has taken the statistical instrument from Dr. Kenneth Ring, who is one of the founders of Ions, and he has used the portion of that statistical instrument that talks about after effects of near-death experiences, and he's applied that to his research, so he's able to compare and contrast these two ex types of experiences, and much, much more. So, uh, Ray is actually, by profession, a uh, tax attorney uh, for a state the state tax attorney for the U.S. Department of Treasury, and involved in many things to do with UFOs and other experiences. He actually had an experience starting in 2012, uh, had witnesses there as well uh, with his family in his family home. He's had other paranormal experiences too, but he now, uh, at one time he was a materialist and an atheist, and now is more deeply spiritually rooted. So today, we are going to set a precedence in, through IONS and elsewhere because we are one of the first groups to bring this to the forefront, this wonderful research study, and it's just the beginning. So join me in welcoming, welcoming Ray Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I just uh, want to thank Andrea for uh, sharing our vision that, um, that uh, human contact with non-human intelligence via what we're calling the various contact modalities, which is through near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, UFO contact, channeling, uh, communicating with spirits and ghosts and entities, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, our perspective in our organization, that it's, it's all interconnected. And I want to uh, be able to present uh, our organization, the work that we're doing, and indeed try to demonstrate to, to this audience that, uh, that we share lots of commonalities, that these are not separate phenomenon that should be studied in a stovepipe fashion, but this is all one phenomenon that needs to be studied in an interdisciplinary uh, uh, format because of the numerous commonalities. Um, the name of our organization is the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences, or FREE. There you can see the wheel, which is the contact modalities wheel, that shows how all of these different ways that humans are piercing the wheel and having contact with non-human intelligence. 
um, contact with ghosts and spirits, UFO contact, NDEs, shamanic journeys, out-of-body experiences, remote viewing, channeling, mystical meditation, that it in fact is one phenomenon and the glue that it's holding it all together is consciousness and I'll go into you know defining uh, some of these terms. Our website is experiencer.org. The title of my presentation today is A Comparative Analysis of UFO-Related Contact with Non-Human Intelligence, Near-Death Experiences and Out-of-Body Experiences, Consciousness and Contact Towards the Unification of the Contact Modalities. Um, as I said earlier, our website is experiencer.org. Uh, our email is info at experiencer.org and I have some business cards that I could hand out to everyone here at the end of my presentation. Our board of the directors, first of all, our co-founders, we have four co-founders. I'm one of the four co-founders. The other uh, co-founder is Dr. Edgar Mitchell, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about him in a, in a couple of seconds. Uh, the other co-founder is Dr. Rudy Shields, who's an emeritus professor of astrophysics at Harvard University. Uh, Edgar was uh, an Apollo astronaut and the founder of the Institute for Noetic Sciences and one of the few individuals to begin to research NDEs even before Raymond Moody published his seminal book in 1975. So Edgar was on top of these things, you know, um, uh, years before. Uh, Mary Rodwell, who is, in my opinion, the world's leading researcher on individuals that have had UFO-related contact. So the four of us are, co are the co-founders. The other individuals on our board are Dr. John Klimo, who uh, was a professor for 40 years of psychology, and he's uh, regarded as one of the, uh, the top academics on the paranormal. Uh, his most famous book is a book on channeling. He's also written two books on the death process. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's written numerous articles on shamanic journeys, um, UFO-related contact experiences. Uh, basically, all of the contact modalities that I spoke about, he's published academic articles on these topics. The other uh, uh, member of our board of directors uh, is Dr. Bob Davis, and he's a retired professor of neuroscience. Uh, a brain specialist. <laughs> well, how did he get involved in this? Well, five years ago he was out in Sedona on vacation with his wife and he saw several UFOs making strange uh, maneuvers in the sky and that's how he got interested in this topic. Um, the other uh, uh, member of our board is uh, Dr. Russell, Russell Scalpone who is a, a PhD in psychology and he's a statistician. And, um, and he's very much interested in, in, in all of these topics that we've discussed. Uh, Dr. Claude Swanson is a PhD physicist from Princeton University. And uh, 12 years ago, he wrote a book titled The Synchronized Universe. Again, how all of these paranormal contact experiences are all interrelated. And he discussed this from a physics uh, perspective. Uh, Kathleen Martin, um, who is uh, uh, the director of experiencer research at MUFON, and, and MUFON is a UFO organization. Rosemary Ellen Guiley has written 62 books on the paranormal. Uh, again, she's been writing on this topic for over 35 years. Giorgio Piacenza is from Peru. He's an experiencer, and he's also um, a consciousness scholar. Um, Dennis Briefer, who's right here. <laughs> uh, Dennis was the past chair of the Center for Psychology and Social Change, which is an institute associated with the late Dr. John Mack. And he was a close dear friend of Dr. Mack, uh, together with Dr. Rudy Shields. Dennis himself is an experiencer, <laughs> but he also uh, has 26 patents engineering patents to his name. So we're, we're not all crazy here. <laughs> so th that is our board. Uh, as you can see, these are, you know, elite individuals that are uh, both scholars and uh, academics and, and experiencers. I will tell you that more than half the members of this group here are experiencers. <laughs> more than half. So just to give you an idea. Dr. Rudy Shields, um, he was going to appear here today, but uh, he just came out of the hospital two days ago. Uh, we did meet with him yesterday. Rudy is an emeritus professor of astrophysics at the Harvard Smithsonian, Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. He was a very dear friend of the late Dr. John Mack, uh, who was a professor at the Harvard Medical School, professor of psychiatry. And he was really the, the first uh, academic 
to be fully integrated in research UFO related contact experiences. And towards the end of his life, he knew that NDEs and UFO contact were interrelated. But he unfortunately uh, um, was killed in an auto accident uh, prematurely and he was never able to continue with that type of uh, uh, initial investigation which Dr. Kenneth Ring continued. Um, uh, Rudy is a champion of the Dr. Edgar Mitchell quantum hologram theory of, of consciousness, which I will talk a little bit about. And Rudy is also the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Cosmology. He's published uh, over three, four, almost 400 uh, peer-reviewed academic uh, articles on astrophysics. And I'm not going to go into the details, but pretty much he's one of the world's leading experts on black holes. So that ought to tell you that this is not just the average person here. This is... Uh, um, a, a genius uh, that is f in full agreement with what we're doing and he's the executive director of our organization. So we're being led at the highest level. Dr. Edgar Mitchell, as I stated before, um, the sixth man to walk on the moon, PhD from MIT in aer aeronautical engineering. Uh, he also founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences, and hopefully some of, of, of the members here know about that organization. It really is it's uh, the leading uh, academic research institute that's studying consciousness uh, via scientific manner. Uh, Dr. Dean Radin is the lead scientist in that organization, and he is the world's leading um, academic researcher on ESP, tele telepathy, precognition. And uh, most of the people there in that organization understand that NDEs are related to consciousness, to ESP, all the things that we're t talking about. <clears throat> uh, also, Edgar was very much uh, interested in promoting friendly relations with, he calls them the ETs, we, we call them non-human intelligence, um, because uh, he himself had a, a deep interest for over 40 years in this phenomenon. Now, what we are not. Free is not a ufology organization. We are not interested in the lights in the sky, nuts and bolts type of research that uh, MUFON and all these other UFO all ufology organizations are interested. We're not interested in conspiracy theories. We're not interested in examining UFO photos or government documents. Uh, we do not investigate UFO sightings. Uh, we do not promote disclosure from the top down as m some of the organizations that are public in this arena. Uh, we believe that disclosure is coming from the bottom up, from the experiencer. So we are not a UFO organization. We have zero interest in what UFO organizations do. Uh, FREE is a 501c3 academic uh, uh, research institute. And what do we focus on? We're focusing on consciousness. What is the nature of our reality? And we're doing that by undertaking cross-comparative research on individuals that are having various types of contact with non-human intelligence. Um, all of the various uh, mainstream physics and philosophical based theories of consciousness, and there's numerous uh, thousands of publications and books on this topic, uh, none of them incorporate the aspect of uh, contact with non-human intelligence. And very few of them incorporate the aspects of spirituality and the aspects of a universal mind. And anyone that's had uh, a near-death experience can clearly see the limitations in all of these mainstream consciousness approaches because um, you're directly floating out of your body. Uh, many of these people are having contact with you know, uh, family members, deceased family members. Uh, many of the individuals are having direct contact with what you're many are describing as God, um, as somehow other, a higher level type of uh, non-human <coughs> intelligence. And so uh, any type of model of consciousness has to incorporate these concepts in it as well. Now, um, consciousness and contact. Uh, we argue in our organization that one of the keys to understanding what is consciousness, to be able to continue deciphering what is the nature of our reality, is to understand the phenomenon of contact with non-human intelligence, with what we are calling the contact modalities, which I'll be defining in a couple of seconds. Our initial research effort, however, will be is focused right now on UFO-related contact with non-human intelligence. Eventually, over time, we want to do, uh, uh, undertake the same type of academic rigorous study that we did on UFO contactees with individuals such as yourself, NDE experiencers, with out-of-body experiencers, with people that do channeling, 
um, that receive messages, telepathic messages, um, sh shamanic journeys, the people that take peyote and ayahuasca. Uh, a good percentage of these individuals have contact with non-human intelligence. Well, they're under these uh, hallucinogens. So we want to be able to study all of these different contact modalities, uh, do rigorous academic research on them, and then derive all that data of what experiences they're having and then superimpose that data on top of consciousness models so we can begin to expand it. And let me just give you an example like I said before. Okay, Both UFO contact experiencers and NDE experiencers are taken out of their body into other dimensions. Many of them are being taught by what many of them call masters. You know, these high level uh, 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 non-human intelligence. They're being taught many things. They're being shown things. They're being shown past lives. <laughs> They're being shown future events. They're being guided. Okay, these are very com common experiences in UFO related contact experiences and some of you can uh, associate with that and re relate to that. So what does that tell you about the nature of our reality? Okay, that it's much much more complex than what we believe it to be. And some of you are saying, duh, you know, <laughs> which is obvious, but it's not obvious to the vast majority of the researchers on consciousness. Now, um, as I said earlier, we, uh, eventually we want to be able to, to do cross-comparative analysis among all the individuals in the contact modalities. And these are just some of the, the, the topic areas, uh, remote viewers, uh, spirit and ghost communications, channeling, shamanic uh, journeys, OBE contact, NDE contact and all the other types of contact with non-human intelligence that we're having. Now the quantum hologram theory of consciousness. Um, we understand that this is uh, right now the best explanation of consciousness and I'm not going to go into the details of this theory. You can go into our website experiencer.org and there are uh, numerous articles that we have discussing the quantum hologram theory of consciousness. But basically, this is a theory that was initially developed oh, oh, more than 40 years ago by um, one of the world's most renowned theoretical physicists, uh, David Bohm, and um, um, Carl Primum, who was a professor of, n of neuroscience at Yale University and then at Stanford University. And they both came up independently that the brain operates as a hologram. And then the physicists came up with the theory that our universe is a hologram in, in structure, holographic in structure. Um, and so they both got together and they developed this joint theory. And so many, mainly physicists after that began adding to that, adding to that, that theory. And Edgar Mitchell was one of those. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go into the details of that. But just let you know that this is a theory that's been developed over 40 years by numerous PhD physicists at the highest level. Now, and I, as I stated earlier, um, our objective is to develop a unified field theory of consciousness and contact. How do we incorporate the old you know, theories of consciousness with the new data that we're getting on, on contact? And what we're doing is um, we're going to be superimposing a lot of this the data that we're getting from the experiencers of all the different contact modalities into or onto the existing theories of consciousness. And the model that we're working now is the quantum hologram theory. And I said it's too complicated to go in, that's another two lectures <laughs> to discuss that. Uh, but as I said before, you can go to our website and, and read numerous academic articles on the quantum hologram theory that are written for the layperson. It's not. Uh, you know, for a PhD <coughs> physicist. It's, uh, most of those articles, almost all of those articles, are written for the lay audience. And again, this is a nice little drawing of <laughs> the contact modalities in consciousness. Now, we at Free believe that all of these contact modalities is actually one unified phenomenon, not separate phenomena. Um, and did any of you go to the IANS conference in Orlando? This is about a year and a half ago. Okay, two individuals. Um, um, I went there to that conference and I had numerous conversations with ND experiencers and some of the individuals uh, that are coordinating the National IONS Conference. And, and I started talking about some of these concepts informally because I wasn't invited to speak, which is one-on-one. -on -one. And it just phew, went over everyone's head 
um, they really could not understand you know what does UFOs have to do with NDEs you know um, and so we saw the need for this type of presentation that we're doing now a more formal uh, presentation now most of the people that are studying the contact modalities that wheel that I told you about they're doing it with like blinders on okay with blinders they're doing it in a stovepipe fashion the NDE folks they're not interested in shamanic journeys UFO contact or consciousness studies per se you know they're just studying NDEs that's it I don't want to know about UFOs I don't want to know about you know shamanic journeys um, reincarnation or out-of-body experiences I just want to focus on NDEs that's it you go uh, for example the um, uh, Dr. Bruce Grayson at the University of Virginia which a lot of you know uh, the exception here is Dr. Kenneth Ring <laughs> and I'll talk a little bit about more about him um, and the organization IONS. These are mainly NDE focused organizations. Uh, at the University of Virginia, Dr. Uh, Ian Stevenson uh, uh, studied uh, reincarnation for over 40 years. Uh, the Institute at uh, IONS, the Institute for Noetic Sciences, the, the Duke Ryan Research Center, they've been focusing on parapsychology and, and psi uh, for many years, but again, their focus is, is on that limited area. They're not expanding it to other areas. Um, the out-of-body experience, remote viewers at the Monroe Institute, well, for example, that's their main focus. It's, it's out-of-body experiences. Um, consciousness studies, the University of, 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 uh, of Arizona has a center for consciousness studies. They have uh, four PhDs that are studying consciousness, that are tenured professors there. Again, you go to one of those conferences, you're not gonna hear one little discussion about NDEs, you're not going to hear one little discussion about UFO contact or any of these contact modalities. They're studying consciousness from a mainstream, traditional perspective. You know, from my own perspective, those people are totally clueless. They might have all the PhDs in the world, but unless you've had a, an NDE uh, or have uh, all of the paranormal type of experiences that I've, that I've had after my contact experience, these people have totally clueless as to what is consciousness. <laughs> okay, that's my perspective. Um, there are very few academics that have been allowed to research uh, hallucinogens. One is Dr. Rich, Rick Strassman. He studied uh, DMT, which is the, the chemical uh, molecule in uh, ayahuasca. And uh, he did, I think it was a two-year study on that. And what he came out with was that half of the people uh, that were under the influence of a controlled uh, um, um, usage of DMT, half of them had contact with non-human intelligence. Okay, and they were there talking back and forth and exchanging information with non-human intelligence in different formats. So, again, those people, uh, many of these people, I've spoken with many of these individuals here, the academic researchers in this field, they know that a relationship exists, possibly exists, but they're like, Ray, we can barely get a hand, uh, a handle of, you know, let's say, for example, NDEs. You know, now you're telling me to expand my horizons to all these other stuff? No, let me just try to understand, you know, NDEs. Okay. Um, so this is the state of this field, of the research, the academic research in, in the contact modalities. Uh, but there is one of these things, uh, these contact modalities, which is rarely discussed in any of these disciplines. Um, and that and that I call the pink elephant uh, in the room. And that's UFO related contact with non-human intelligence, okay? You talk to any NDE organizations about this stuff, they're like, they stop you right there. No, no, we're not a UFO, we're not interested in UFOs. That's, you know, aliens, you know, that's ETs and stuff like that. Uh, I've interacted with some of the leaders of these organizations that I mentioned before, and they just will not touch this topic at all because they see it as so fringe, you know, so outside of, of the mainstream. Uh, you know, we could talk about NDEs, we could talk about out-of-body experiences, we could talk about healing, you know, Reiki healing, do studies of Reiki healing, all of these type of aspects, but when you're talking about UFO contact, no, that's like <laughs> total taboo. And in private, I could tell you some of these little stories of the conversations that I've had. <laughs> with some of these individuals. So what is our organization doing, okay? We are undertaking the world's first comprehensive multi-language academic research study on individuals that have had UFO-related contact with non-human intelligence and its associated paranormal um, uh, phenomena, activities. Um, the major reason for this was because when I had my experience, 
the first thing I did is I turned to the internet because I was a total rationalist. I had no conceptualization of UFO contact, NDEs, the paranormal, all of these things that we're talking about. Uh, I didn't even know these things existed, okay? So the first thing you do, uh, let me just very briefly what happened to my wife and I. Um, we had a, a Jack Russell Terrier that became totally paralyzed. He was 15 years old, very sick, uh, walking with arthritis like an old lady. She was taking Viagra for her heart, a diuretics to flush out the excess liquids in, in her body. She's like a 90-year-old 90, 90 lady, basically. And then she became totally paralyzed. And so we talked to our vet, and he was going to open up his office the next day to euthanize her. So then my wife, who's a hardcore Catholic, was praying all night. And... We woke up, the dog woke us up barking in the morning, but she was still totally paralyzed. My wife carried her down the stairs to see if she wanted to go to, to the bathroom before we brought her to the vet. And, uh, and we had a, 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 an, an angelic being, <laughs> pretty much. It was uh, 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 an energy being appeared in our living room. That being made my wife disappear in front of my eyes <laughs> and the dog. <laughs> put me to sleep for 45 minutes. And then when I woke up 45 minutes later, my wife like popped up in the middle of the living room again and celebrating, hallelujah, hallelujah, the angels cured her, the angels cured her. And the dog was running around, running around the whole living room. And so it was like an atom bomb in my brain. Uh, you know, it was a re you know, atheist material rationalist. Uh, um, and so my wife had what is called missing time. She had 45 minutes of missing time because I checked the clock, it was 45 minutes later. I won't go into the detail of that experience, but basically after that experience, I went to the internet. You know, what the hell just happened, you know? <laughs> and um, I didn't find any answers. I didn't find any answers. Later on, my wife saw a big gigantic UFO right outside the house. Um, and then I knew it was UFO related. And then three months later after that, my daughter and I saw this big gigantic UFO, like the size of Foxborough Stadium, on top of my next door neighbor's house. Like, you know, three feet on top of the house was the bottom of the craft. Went up 100 meters and 600 meters back. And, um, and uh, I playfully called down this craft just to kill time. And poof, 15 minutes later, this thing shows up. Okay. So uh, imagine what that does to your brain. <laughs> you know, it literally fries your brain. And then we began having all of these paranormal experiences. So um, what's on the internet? It's, it's, it's nonsense, okay, as most of you know. And then I began to uh, do a, a literature review, an academic literature review of what has been written on UFO contact experiences. And what I found out, there was none. One of the few exceptions was this book by Dr. Kenneth Ring, which I'm going to be talking about later, but that only focused on a tiny uh, component of this phenomenon. And I'll talk about that later. So basically, we knew almost nothing about this phenomenon. What we had was thousands of people writing their books, just like NDE books. You know, there's thousands of people that have written books about their NDE experiences. But in terms of doing a comprehensive detailed study, like much of this has been done in the NDE field. You know, there is a lot of this research, and, but none regarding UFO-related contact experiences. I'm, I'm going to skip a lot, of, a lot of research methodology here because I want to get more into the, the, the data and the surveys. But basically, uh, this was uh, developed by six PhDs, uh, reti all retired professors. Uh, the two co -chair, three co-chairs actually is Dr. John Klimo, um, uh, Dr. Bob Davis, and myself. And I'm a PhD candidate from Berkeley. Um, I went to Cornell for a master's, so I do have an academic uh, background and I was an adjunct professor for six years so the three of us uh, led the research uh, uh, design um, as I said earlier no previous research studies have been done on this significant comprehensive research studies most of the previous studies had 50 individuals uh, as a sample pool they had 50 questions um, we've had uh, over 3,600 individuals in the English language just to give you a difference and we've had 600 quantitative questions and, um, and also qualitative questions as well. I'll go into those details later on. 
Uh, in terms of publicity, tons of publicity. We were publicizing our research study for over three years. Um, over 100 radio shows. Um, we published it in over 500 Facebook sites on a bi-weekly basis, encouraging people to take our surveys. And this wasn't just UFO organizations. It was NDE organizations, out-of-body uh, sites in Facebook, uh, consciousness uh, sites in Facebook, new, Ener new wave, it was called new um, new age uh, type of uh, Facebook site. It was the whole gambit where we might be able to find an experiencer. Okay, uh, our study was comprised of uh, 600 quantitative questions. The previous studies had basically 50. The the questions. We asked uh, questions on, uh, for people to answer the, the surveys only upon conscious explicit memory. Because when you talk to individuals that have had these things, um, they don't tell you that half of their experiences came through a lucid, lucid dream, the other uh, one-fourth came through uh, a hypnotic regression, and only maybe one-fourth of it was derived from an actual conscious experience. So we ask people to answer the questions only about conscious uh, memory. We also have 70 open-ended questions where people are asked to write the details to these uh, to 70 questions. Um, and later on for phase four, uh, we want to be able to interview the top 100 experiencers and do really rigorous uh, research on these individuals. Our studying is being done in multiple language, languages. I'm not going to go into the details of all the topic questions that were asked. Hopefully when I actually go into the data, you'll get a, a little bit of the flavor of what we asked. But basically we talked about their family background, family experiences, that their parents, uh, siblings, brothers and sisters have experiences. Um, we, uh, in terms of their contact experiences, we divided into three components. One is contact with a non-human intelligence physically present, um, contact with a non-human intelligence that uh, was not on... Uh, that was in a 3D uh, reality on Earth or a craft or some other uh, environment. And the other was uh, contact in a multi-dimensional matrix reality. And that's what I'm going to be focusing here because it's very, very similar to um, OBE and NDE type of experiences. Uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, we, we also ask questions on the psychic and the paranormal experiences they had, the nature of the non-human intelligence, what it looked like, what it did, what did it tell you things, etc., etc. I'm not going to go into that now in, in my presentation. The information received by non-human intelligence, again, I'm not going to go into that uh, uh, at this point. Uh, the physical experiences, how did you change, what physical things did they do to you? Uh, for example, one thing that I will allude to is that over 750 individuals have had a medical healing by non-human intelligence. <coughs> um, and then the psychological uh, changes that took place before, during, and after their experience. And that's where Dr. Ken's ring comes into place. Okay, so um, uh, let me skip over this uh, area. Uh, we're doing the study in English, Spanish, German, French, Slovak, and soon Chinese. Uh, in English, we've had over 3,600 responses. In Spanish, over 600 responses. And in German, now close to 500 responses. Okay, these are the actual numbers in the English language survey. Uh, as you can see, um, the, the phase one are the general experiencers. Phase two are the much more detailed experiencers the people that have had very profound experiences. Phase three are like for the top experiencers because the questions that we asked, uh, if you haven't had major experiences, you're not gonna answer most of these questions. So um, it's sort of like a filtering process to, to get into the heavy, like uh, this is the, the, the Daniel Brinkley types, you know, <laughs> Anita Morjani types. That's the phase three. <coughs> okay, now, um, an overview of some of the similarities. I could add like another 10 in here uh, in terms of general categories, but one is the uh, similarities is the type of beings that are uh, in uh, NDE and if you UFO contact experiences. The other is um, the uh, how many people in our survey have had NDEs, OBEs, and medical healings. The reason I address medical healings because I know that's in the literature of, of of, of, uh, of near-death experiences. Many of the individuals that have near-death experiences are returned completely healed. Uh, Anita Morjani is probably the most famous example, but there, you know, I've read hundreds of, of uh, heard hundreds of videos on YouTube of people that were very, very sick and all of a sudden returned healed. I'm sure uh, people here have heard uh, these stories as well. 
Okay, a lot of folks nodding their heads here. So I want to discuss that, that there's a healing taking place with both of this phenomenon. Uh, also the physical changes, and I'll be highlighting some of those. And then the transformational psychological changes, which is where Dr. Kenneth Ring's study uh, comes in. Okay, uh, in terms of the type of beings, 55% uh, of the individuals have seen energy beings. Okay, this is for UFO contact experiencers. Okay, for many of the NDE experiencers, I would assume that's the number one category of, of entity that are seen. 55% have seen energy beings, 52% have seen human looking beings, and 46% have had spirit looking beings. Doesn't that remind you of an NDE in terms of the categories? Okay, very, very similar. Communication. How does communication take place during NDE? What I've heard from everybody is telepathic communication. Is that correct? <coughs> okay. Same thing with our group. We've had no one or very few people that have said, okay, the communication with th these beings, which is now close to 1,800 people, have communicated with these beings. Almost all of them have been telepathic communications. Okay? So you see another similarity there. As you can see, the number one type of being that people are seeing uh, at almost 56% is the energy being. And um, in the next part of the chart, I have the actual number, but we're talking about uh, more than a thousand individuals have had encounters with energy beings. Um, the number two is the human looking being. Okay. Now, the little uh, uh, exception here <laughs> with the NDE experience is the short grace. I'm, uh, I, as far as I know, oh, there are several people that have had NDEs that have had encounters with short grace during their NDEs. Many of you might not know that, but on the, in, on the, on the YouTube, uh, uh, I, I have recordings of various individuals that had NDEs that have had encounters with short grace. So anyway, and, and then the last category there is the spirit form at 46%. So that is just a, a graphic um, um, presentation of, um, of the type of beings that are seen. Now, let's go into, um, okay. Have you ever had an out-of-body experience? At least my understanding with an NDE is that a, a good many of the individuals, it might be the majority of the individuals, the first step in an NDE is you're out-of-body and you're seeing your body underneath. Well, guess what? 80% <laughs> of these, 79% uh, of individuals that have had UFO contact have had an out-of-body experience. Is that, does that stri is striking to some of you here? <laughs> okay. Again, we're talking about the, the similarities here. This is just the beginning of discussing um, some of the similarities. Another question. Have you ever had a near-death experience? Okay, what's that number? 37% have had a near-death experience. I don't think the average U.S. population is 37% for the NDEs. Uh, maybe someone here can educate us later on, but I don't think it's 37%, okay? So there's a very large number of individuals that have had UFO contact have also had a near-death experience. And here we're talking 630 individuals, okay? There's not a small little amount, okay? very large number of people have had a near-death experience. Okay, question, do you believe that any of these ETs, and we defined in our survey ETs as non-human intelligence, but we made it easy for them to, you know, to associate the term non-human intelligence, so we wrote out ETs. So everyone knew that when they took the survey that we meant non-human intelligence. Do, uh, do you believe that any of, this, of these ETs have performed a medical healing on e either you or a member of your family? 786 individuals said yes. That's 40, is it almost 50% of the of people that answered that question. So it's not 50% of all the people that took that survey because a lot of people did not answer that question. But at least the number is 786 people. Okay, and I know that in the NDE literature, there are literally tons of people that have had medical healings associated with their NDEs. So you're starting to see a little bit the, the very beginnings of a pattern, and I'm going to go more into those details.
Okay. <clears throat> All right, from the current slide. Okay, now I'm going to be going over data of contact in a matrix reality. Uh, the UFO contact experiencers is, is having communications and, and uh, commu uh, communications with non-human intelligence in many different ways. One way is, you know, in your living room, a little gray appears or a human being appears, pop in your living room and you're, you know, you're freaking out, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's one way, which is a physical contact. Um, other people are... are uh, roughly 25% of the people are brought to to a craft uh, or a UFO ship, for example. Uh, and then there's other people that are being brought to what we're calling a matrix reality, and I will be defining that later on, which is um, a matrix reality is not like a 3D reality that you perceive it. Um, a lot of people with NDEs, that can be described as a matrix type of reality, which is not uh, a, a uh, a physical 3D type of, of reality, okay? Um, and so let me go into some of that data. <clears throat> okay, very good. Okay, did you ever have an ET contact experience but you were not in a three-dimensional reality, i.e. you were not in a perceived physical location such as on Earth, on a planet, on a ship, etc. But instead you perceived yourself in a quote-unquote matrix type of reality, a reality with no boundaries, similar to like you're in the middle of, 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 of outer space. Um, again, it's very difficult to, to pin that down. <laughs> but uh, um, but let, let's go into some of those responses here. And again, um, 809 individuals said yes to this question. Okay, let me see how to get to, to the next... Uh, okay. Uh, the beings that are being seen in this matrix reality, again, are the human-looking being, the spirit form, and the energy being, okay? So again, it's very similar to an NDE. Was your consciousness separate, separated from your body at the time of the contact experience? And look at that number, 66% yes. My consciousness was separated from my body. Does that sound like an NDE type of experience? While in this matrix type of reality, were your thoughts sped up? Some of the individuals that have had NDEs describe these type of characteristics. Here we, we have roughly, uh, was that 56% said yes. Some very sped up, and others not so much, but 56%. While in this matrix-like reality, were your senses more vivid than usual? And again, we had a, a very high number of 76% uh, uh, that said yes. While in this matrix type of reality, did you feel separated from your body? For example, I lost awareness of my body. I clearly left my body and existed outside of my body. Look at this very large number. 53%. While in this matrix-like type of reality, did you have a feeling of peace and pleasantness? Again, very large number. Um, relief and calmness was 29%. Incredible peace and pleasantness was 44.5%. Uh, well, in this matrix-like uh, type of reality, did you see or feel surrounded by a brilliant light? Okay, it was uh, a slightly over 50%. Well, in this matrix-like type of reality, did you seem to encounter a mystical being or presence or hear an unidentified voice? And... Uh, I sensed their presence was 37% and I actually saw this being was 42%. Okay. 
Again, you see the similarities with the NDE phenomenon. Well, in this matrix type of reality, did you see deceased uh, individuals or religious spirits? I actually saw this, uh, this type of being at, well, 24%. I sensed their presence at 13.5%. Uh, so again, not as large as the NDE uh, number for this category, but still many. Did scenes from your past come back to you? Okay. Again, it's a, a, sm a smaller number. Uh, my past flashed me very fast and it was out of my control, 11%. I remember many past events. That's 16%. So this kind of reminds you of like a life review. Did you seem to enter some other unearthly world? And again, it's um, uh, an unfamiliar strange place, almost 30%, uh, clearly mystical or unearthly realm, 40.5%. Again, very similar to an NDE. Did time seem to speed up or slow down? That's another aspect that NDE experiencers talk about, frequently talk about. Uh, here we have um, time seemed to go faster or slower than usual, 11%. Everything seemed to be happening at once, 14%. Uh, time stopped or, lo or lost all meaning, 50%. That's another common indicator of people who've had NDEs, that there is no concept of time. I'm sure some of you are shaking your heads out there <laughs> that have had these things yourselves. Did you feel a sense of harmony or unity with the universe? 55% said, I felt united or one with the world. Very similar to many people that have had NDEs. I felt no longer in conflict with nature, 13%. So let me just skip these. I could go on and on and on with these type of experiences in this type of reality. Uh, everyone see the similarities here, okay? Very, very close to, uh, to NDE type of experiences. <coughs> The next category I'm going to go over is paranormal experiences. Okay. Has anyone in your, else in your family had paranormal experiences? And the number is 76%. So the vast majority of these individuals that have had UFO-related contact experiences are having paranormal experiences. Now, my understanding is that this is a common phenomenon with NDE experiencers. Is that correct? That when you get returned, uh, the individuals having different types of paranormal experiences. ESP, precognition, um, Damon Brinkley and his friends are going over his house to get uh, uh, the game win winning uh, touchdowns, you know, to bet, uh, <laughs> to earn some money on the football games, okay? Uh, this is very common within the uh, UFO, uh, uh, excuse me, with the NDE uh, uh, contact arena. People seeing energy auras. I've read that with experiencers. They get returned from an NDE and all of a sudden they're seeing these auras. People are able to do healings or study Reiki healing of NDE experiencers. All of a sudden here's a, someone has never had an interest in this. All of a sudden they want to, I want to take a Reiki class. You know? Both NDE experiencers and UFO related contact experiencers. If I had a dollar for every UFO contact experiencers that has gone into Reiki healing, I would have over a thousand dollars here, you know? It's like, and I'm sure that's very common with the NDE experiencers because I've talked to, to many of them as well. Um, for example, lights. I heard uh, um, Dr. Bruce Grayson in a lecture that he gave. He said uh, one uh, aspect that he's heard many, many times is NDE experiencers having susceptibility to electronic devices, okay? Or working under a street lamp the lamp turns off, and then he, he goes past it, and it's back on again, okay? And he said he's heard that over and over again, okay? Same thing with UFO-related contact experiences. Same thing. Something's going on here. Okay, this just has the breakdown of who in your family is having these types of experiences. And it seems like uh, uh, the brothers and sisters at 23%, their mother at 27%, their father is very low at, at less than 10%. Uh, 
uh, your children at 26 percent, um, grandchildren at 2 percent, grandparents at 7 percent. So uh, you, you, you can get a nice distribution of who's having these paranormal experiences as well. And it seems like it's spread out uh, between the mother and the brothers and sisters and the children, as well as the individual, obviously. Okay, we already discussed the out-of-body experiences. Um, here's an interesting question here. Have you ever met a non-human intelligence during an out-of-body experiences? Okay, look at the large number there, 45%. Okay, they're out of their body and they're having communications with a non-human intelligent being. Very similar to an NDE, right? Past lives, okay? Have you ever had a past life memory? For example, memory of your consciousness in a previous life. 66% of these individuals have had that experience. Have you ever participated in a channeling session and made contact with non-human intelligence? Again, it wasn't very large numbers, 374 people, but still, it's 22% of the people. And now I, I've read many individuals that have had NDEs that now have gone into channeling. I'm sure, sure some of you have heard these stories as, as well. Have you seen what can be described as a spirit or a ghost? And again, the huge number, 76%, uh, 1,325 individuals. That's another thing which is common with NDE experiencers, and that is when many people return from an NDE experiencer, many of them are starting to see ghosts and spirits. I'm not going to ask, you know, raise your hands here, <laughs> that's a personal question. But if you talk to other NDE experiencers and you're sharing stories, you know the familiarity of, of what I'm talking about. That it seems to open up some type of window that uh, flows all of these paranormal experiences. You have heightened senses. Do you ever recall viewing the Earth from a perspective that may seem to be away from your planet? You know, like you're out of body and you're above Earth looking down and, well, look at this. We've got 49% of the people have had this type of an experience. Okay, let me just sort of go quickly over this. Do you have memories of you visiting or receiving a glimpse of heaven or what can be called the spirit world? 45%, 774 people. Um, I can tell you I've spoken with many, many experiencers that have been brought to the spirit world by non-human intelligence. For example, my best friend in Miami, Alberto Fernandez, who is a retired federal DEA agent. His wife is a, um, a PhD in psychology. Their daughter is a PhD in psychology. All three of them are experiencers. Alberto had this human-looking being right in front of him, which he calls a master's, okay, <laughs> dressed in white robe okay with like some energy around him and uh, and, and talking with Alberto and, he, and he's as sane as hell on this man okay and, and, he, and it's not through lucid dreams it's not through hypnotic regression all of his experiences are conscious uh, experiences many of them validated by his wife and his daughter okay and so he asked this being you know I really want to know what it is to die you know the being gave him a near-death experience okay out of body, floating out of his body, which he's had many before, you know, going through the tunnel, racing, you know, 100 miles an hour through the tunnel, the light got bigger, 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 and then when he got right up to the light, he stopped. And then the being told him, he says, when you die, this is what's going to happen to you, but when you die, you got to go through the light. Don't look back, okay? Don't look back, you got to go through the light, okay? So. Alberto's story I've heard many times with experiencers, okay? So you're beginning to see the relationship here, and so many similarities. 774 people, okay? So this is not two or three people I'm getting this from. This is a lot of folks. Um, and let me go quickly through some of these things here. Um, these are orbs, the individuals that have seen orbs. Um, uh, the orb phenomenon is, uh, it seems to be associated with the UFO-related contact phenomenon. I don't 
I've never heard it associated with the NDE uh, uh, a phenomenon when people get returned seeing orbs. Maybe it's just something specifically related to the UFO contact experiencers. But um, uh, we have um, 60, goodness, 1,161 people of the close to 2,000 people that have taken the phase two survey have, ha have seen orbs, physically seen orbs, not through a picture. And the vast majority are inside their house. Most of the, these are the colors of the orbs, as you can see the different colors. The, these orbs go through a physical object. And many people describe an orb just popping in through, you know, a wall or coming in through a window. Uh, they see it on the other side of the window. All of a sudden it dematerializes and it's inside the house. Hundreds of these stories. Have material objects mysteriously appeared right in front of you? I think it's called uh, apertures in the parapsychology field, okay? Again, uh, it's not a very common phenomenon, but it's 383 people where things just pop, okay? Um, Alberto is one of them. I won't go into those details, but um, these are very common with UFO-related contact phenomenon. I don't think it's associated with NDE. I've never heard of anyone that's had NDEs that has, have, has had these experiences. These are precognition skills. Um, uh, do you frequently know when someone is about to telephone you that you cannot easily explain or foreseeing future events, precognition skills? And I know that's associated with the, N with the NDE phenomenon. Uh, a lot of people have described increased precognition skills uh, after an, an NDE. As all of a sudden, you know, you know what's going to happen. You just know it. And then poof, it happens. Same thing with the UFO-related contact phenomenon. As you can see here, this is 73% um, of the individuals have these type of increased precognition skills. The next topic is the transformational aspects of, of UFO-related contact. And again, numerous, numerous parallels. Um, Okay, um, after I had my contact experience several years later, I read a book by Dr. Kenneth Ring titled The Omega Project. How many here have read that book? Okay, and you've never had an NDE. <laughs> okay, I highly recommend this book for everybody here. Okay, everyone here should know of Dr. Kenneth Ring. He's one of the um, leading academics that has researched near-death experiences uh, for over 35 years. Uh, he's a retired professor of psychology from the University of Connecticut, and he's written maybe like five or six books, NDE-related type of books. In this book, um, is a statistical study. He compared 74 individuals that had NDE contact experiences with 97 individuals that had um, uh, ET or UFO related type of contact experiences and his conclusion and I'll go over some of that data both experiences serve as ultra terrestrial agents of cultural deconstruction which dismantle our commonly held paradigms of religious and metaphysical ideas and our entire constellations of culture and social knowledge to create a new transformed human, a total transformation of the experiencer. So I'm gonna, what I did is, um, when we were starting our, uh, our research study, I borrowed 75 of his questions from this research study. So I wanted to see if we can, you know, if our uh, findings corroborate what he concluded and, or if there was some difference, except our focus was just focusing on, um, on UFO-related contact experiences. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the data la later on, but this is just an overview of those findings. 85% of the individuals in our survey reported to have gone major positive transformations. Okay, and that's 
the total opposite of what's circulating in uh, Facebook and on YouTube and on the internet. You know, it's all these evil reptilians going out and raping my wife and, you know, these little greys doing all these experiments on me. You know, uh, the reality is that the vast majority of these individuals, their experiences were highly positive and resulted in a major psychological positive transformation. For example, um, uh, concerned with spiritual matters, ability to love, to help, to have compassion for others, appreciation of the ordinary things in life, insight into the problems of others, concern for the welfare and ecological matters of the planet, understanding of what life is all about, and a conviction that there is life after death. All of this strongly increased after their experience. The exact findings of Dr. Kenneth Ring. Now the decrease the concern with material things in life. All of a sudden, you were, you know, a, a greedy SOB, you know. All you cared about was making money, 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 money. That was your number one drive in life. Now, you have no concern about money. That's not what's important, okay? Your interest in organized religion. What we found with both groups, but particularly in our study with the UFO-related contact group, is that someone like me that was an atheist, all of a sudden became highly spiritual. People that were religious in the past, not a huge number, but a very large number, they, well, some of them are still religious, they become much more spiritual, okay? Again, little to no fear of death for both groups. Isn't that interesting? Okay, now let me get into some of that data, which I think is very important. Okay, my desire to help others. We have various categories. That green category is strongly increased. The blue category is, is increased somewhat. Uh, the orange category is, has not changed. And then those little slivers that you see there, uh, that strong, uh, I guess, aqua blue, is um, decreased somewhat and strongly decrease, you, you don't even see that here. <laughs> so basically, the overwhelmingly majority of the individuals, uh, their desire to help others has significantly increased. They become more compassionate human beings. My compassion for others, same numbers my appreciation for the ordinary things of life. Again, strongly increased. My concern with the material things in life. Okay. Um, again, as you can see, maybe 66% were increased, had not changed. You know, some people still stuck with their material, their nice little, um, you know, BMW, whatever, some folks here. So, um, so the had not changed is, um, 28%. But in terms of uh, the, 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 uh, the, the decrease of material things here, we're talking about uh, 67%. Okay, very large numbers. My concern with spiritual matters, again, overwhelmingly, uh, has increased. People have become much, much more spiritual. My interest in organized religion. Again, it's the total opposite. Uh, decrease, strongly decreased was 50, almost 52%. Decreased somewhat, another 12%. My desire to achieve a higher consciousness. Again, this is associated with spirituality. Look at that, huge numbers, strongly increased. My competitive tendencies, again, decreased, significant decrease. Here we get into the ecological questions. My concern with the welfare of the planet Earth, huge increase. People didn't care about recycling, <laughs> you know, had a candy wrapper, throw it out, you know, on the parkway on, the, on 95, whatever. Uh, all of a sudden, they become super ecological. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, pick that up. Go out and pick it up. You know, <laughs> so it's 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 you know major changes. They become very ecological. 
um, NDE twos, NDEers as well. My understanding of what life is all about, okay, increased tremendously. Like myself, I was flesh and bones. <laughs> I die, I die. That's it, you know. What is life about? You know, take care of my kids, you know, be a good husband, be a good provider. That was life to me. Now, while that's important, my desire to, to seek higher knowledge, like what the hell is really going on, you know? Is there a God? Are there angels? Are there other, you know, spirit and beings out there? You know, what is, what is all the paranormal stuff? What is going on? What is the nature of our reality? To me, that's what, what consumes me now. And I'm sure many of the people have had a near-death experience. That's right up there, <laughs> you know? Uh, so as you can see, the similarities. The similarities, again, we're getting at. My personal sense of purpose in life. Now I've got a purpose. Before I didn't have a purpose. I mean, you know, taking care of your child and your wife, you know, that, that's a purpose in life. But now I see it as a boring purpose, <laughs> right? Now I've got a purpose. Now I look forward to the future. I'm not scared of death. Okay? Look how many of the large numbers there. All these people now have a purpose in life. Okay. A lot of people shaking your heads, okay? Now, this is not NDE. You think all this data is from the NDE experience. No, this is from the people that have had UFO-related contact. Okay? But I took this data from Dr. Kenneth Ring's initial survey. So you can see the similarities of what's going on here. My belief in a higher power, in God, whatever you might want to call it, you know, significantly increased. That there is a God, a higher power, a universal mind, whatever you might want to call it, significantly increased. There is uh, an inner meaning, uh, meaning to my life. My fear of death, look at this. Strongly decreased was, what's the number here? 50% strongly decreased my fear of death. Decreased somewhat, almost 23%. Okay, same thing with NDE experiences. Once you've gone to heaven, you know, and <laughs> had communications with deceased uh, relatives, have had a life review, are you going to fear death? No, most of the people who have had an NDE want to stay up there. I don't want to come down. No, no, you got to go back. I don't want to come down. <coughs> Boom, kicks you right in the butt and you're back down, okay? So are you going to fear death after an experience like that? No, most people don't. Same thing with UFO related contact experiencers. Okay, that's another little controversial topic. Uh, a lot of people are now open to the notion of reincarnation. Not that they believe it, but you know, maybe that's a possibility. <coughs> Empathy with others. I could go on and on and on. Everyone gets an understanding of what's going on here. Okay, Dr. John Mack, who is a professor of psychiatry at Harvard University, uh, said people know their experiences and what they have undergone does not fit with the prevailing mechanistic worldview. Large percentages of people seem to know there is an unseen world or <coughs> hidden, re hidden dimensions of reality.